Yeah, we're back with a new book called The Locker Room. Helps open the discussion on difficult issues a lot of Americans are facing right now, including discrimination and cancel culture. Joining us this morning to talk about is co-author Damon West, who's also a professor of criminal justice at the University of Houston downtown. Good morning, Damon. Thanks for spending some time with us this morning. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Owens. Thanks for having me. Well, tell us more first off about The Locker Room. Yeah, so my buddy Stephen Mackey uh, reached out to me last summer and said, hey, would you write a book with me about facilitating better conversations in America? Because right now in America, y'all, we're not having conversations anymore. We're we're not listening to each other. And, and if we're not going to listen to each other, there's no way we can come to a, a resolution of our issues that we're facing right now. And I thought to myself, I thought, you know what, that is a good conversation to have. And my buddy Stephen, just like myself, is in the sports world. So we thought sports would be the right medium to tell that story because in America, sports always gets there first. Before there was Martin Luther King Jr., there was Jackie Robinson. Before we integrated, you know, before we could integrate a lunch counter in America, we integrated a locker room. So I, I think that sports always gets there for, first and sports has these great lessons to teach us in life. And so that's why we use sports and the, the name the locker room because Right now, America doesn't have a locker room. We don't have a place where we can go to and we can discuss difficult topics because in a locker room, your success is my success. Well, in a locker room of teams that wins, win games, right? I mean, you can have a locker room of a losing team, but in a locker room where a team wins, your success is my success. The standard is the standard. No one is above the standard and, and a mistake doesn't make you a mistake. There's always a path to become whole in a locker room of a team that wins games. So we wanted to try to bring a locker room to America. And, and with that said, what are some of the best ways to start these kinds of conversations, these difficult ones, on prejudice or discrimination? Yeah, I think humility and grace. That's the, the keys that we keep talking about throughout the entire book. Uh, humility is required on one side to be able to listen to tough tough truths, things you may not think or things you may not think are true about a position you may be in, but the other side sees it differently. And it, it requires humility to listen to what the other side has to say and, and really you know, listen for what they're trying to tell you. But grace is the other component that I think it takes that we don't have right now in this country that, that we have to work towards. And grace is tough, I mean, because grace always costs the person giving it more than it costs the person who receives it. Yeah. Grace is a very tough thing. And, and and until we have more humility and grace, I don't think we'll ever get to the other side of these difficult topics that plague us right now. In this country, we have the potential to be so much greater. I tell people all the time, the only thing greater than America is her potential. But we're not living up to our potential right now because we're not listening to each other with humility and grace. Right, right. And what about cancel culture? You know, many celebs get next out by fans or comments or actions they've made in the past. You know, Kevin Hart, Ellen DeGeneres, Roseanne, J.K. Rowling. What are your thoughts about that phenomenon? Yeah, I think cancel culture, look, there's a difference between holding someone accountable and holding someone hostage. And when cancel culture gets out of control, people feel like they're held hostage. I read a poll recently, y'all. It was, uh, I can't remember who did the poll. Maybe it was New York Times. But the poll said that almost like 80-something percent of Americans don't feel like they can express their opinions on certain topics. That's 80-something percent of people that do not say how they feel about something because they're scared of this thing called the cancel culture. And look, I, um, I believe people can be held accountable without being held hostage. And right now, I think in this country, too many people feel like they're held hostage. I mean, we need to hold people accountable, but not hostage. I think part of the issue too is a lot of these conversations we're having online, we're only allowed to have in bits and pieces. You know, if it's Twitter, it's 140 characters, yeah. whereas we can sit here for even three or four minutes may not be a lot of time compared to a tweet. It is a lot of time. So, so I guess where does the time investment come in, into play and in how we work through these issues? Yeah, you know, Owen, I, I tell people all the time, you, you make time for the things that are important. You know, you either find a way or you find an excuse. And we've got to find a way to, to shift ourselves back. The world of social media has changed us. The, 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 the quick news cycles have changed us. We, yeah. We're programmed to want this thing called instant gratification. We want things now, now, now. And the reality is the real world doesn't work that way. I mean, things that are important take time. Results take yeah. time to measure. Damon, and, we got 30 seconds be before Ironically, we go. Ironically, we got to kick I know, you off. I, yeah. your, your book's available now? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's available on Amazon. 